Hello, hello. Kamala Harris just announced that Tim Waltz will be her running mate, and I thought it would be fun to look at the astrological synastry between their charts. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Lisa Merrifield from Trails Edge Astrology, and I am here to help you understand and navigate the cosmic energy so that you can make informed decisions and live your best life. Um, I haven't ever done any political, or I haven't done any political astrology to date. Um, not that I haven't thought about it, I just haven't done it. Uh, I'm curious what you think. So, of course, like, subscribe, comment, share, all those things. If this is interesting to you, um, just to let me know if it's worth doing and, um, yeah, if it's worth doing. And, um, you know, your politics may differ from mine, and I want you to know that I respect your right to have a different perspective, and um, I'm certainly open to civil conversations about politics, but remember that any negative comments you make just show the algorithm that I'm getting interactions, so they help me, and I'm not going to engage, so they might not help you. So keep that in mind. Anyway, but yeah, if you if you like this, let me know what you think. Um, I was just talking to um, my oldest child, and they said, um, make the astrology you want to view. So that's what I'm doing. I was curious, and so I'm going to share with you what I have found. All right, so I'm actually going to put up the chart tonight and um, and show you what I'm looking at, just for the fun of it. So let me do that. So here is um, Tim Waltz birth chart. And let me get up my tools. Okay. So, so when I look at his chart, you know, there's a couple things that, that kind of stand out to me right away. Now I, I should mention, we don't have a birth time for Tim Waltz. So, um, so the houses don't, we can't use the houses as an indication. Um, and there's some flexibility, which we'll talk about in a second. So we're not positive of everything, but we can get we can get some general, general insights. Um, the first thing I, I want to note is um, all of this beautiful Aries energy, um, and you know somebody with an Aries sun and an Aries moon it tends to be bold and creative. Um, sometimes Aries energy is the warrior energy; it's the ram. Um, so it's good in politics, and it's really fabulous because Kamala has an Aries moon. And in synastry, you look at if your sun and moon signs match, or if your sun sign matches with your partner, or your moon sign matches with your partner, like like that's one of the keys of of really fabulous synastry. So um, so just looking at that alone, that indicates to me that they really understand each other in a way that um, that other people may not. And I should I should back up and say synastry. Um, is the word we use in astrology when we look at two people's charts together and we kind of compare um, and see see where there are things that work and where there are things that um, maybe work less well. But um, but yeah, I love that Waltz is an Aries sun and Harris is an Aries moon. So so in and of itself, just there, that's great. That that shows um, shows a good connection. Um, let me undo that. So Waltz is either a an early Aquarius moon or a late Capricorn moon. And we this is one of the things we don't know because we don't have a birth time. So depending on when he was born, he's either a Capricorn moon or an Aquarius moon. Um, regardless, whichever he is, he has been going through or is has gone through, is is about to go through or is going through right now, um, a Pluto transit. And Pluto transits to your moon are um, no joke. It's about transformation of your foundations, your home, your families, your emotional well-being. And in my experience, these kind of transits um, give us the opportunity and, and really put a lot of pressure on us to really be more authentically who we are. Um, it, uh, a Pluto transit like that makes it a lot harder to stay quiet about things you see that are wrong in the world, particularly it, in Capricorn and Aquarius kinds of placements. So I think that's super interesting, and I'm really interested to see, um, yeah, as we as we watch him, 
and as more astrologers look at this to kind of figure out like has he already gone through this pluto transit or is is it still is the pressure mounting is this this um is coming into into this vice presidency or this onto this vice president ticket vice presidential ticket is that something something related to um to his journey so and we don't know um Again, we don't know a rising sign, so we can't say what kind of tools he uses to bring into his lifetime. Um, I, I can't say, I can't predict necessarily what his rising sign is, but I'm willing to bet he's not a cancer rising. He does not come across as a cancer rising. So, um, but we can't, we can't say that. So now I'm going to, um, I'm going to pause for a second and I'm going to put up Kamala's chart with Tim Waltz's chart so that so that we can look at them together. So I'll be right back. Okay, back. All right. So on the inner circle, I'm just making sure you can see that. Oh, you know what? We need to make this bigger again. There we go. On the inner circle, we have Kamala's chart. So Kamala is a Libra sun. I talked about the Aries moon. Um, she is a Gemini rising. So um, yeah, so... So it comes with all those things. We could talk about her chart another time, but um, but just in, in terms of her big three, Libra Sun, Aries Moon, Gemini Rising. Um, when I look at her chart um, against um, waltzes, a couple things I notice right off the bat. Um, Tim's Aries Sun, in fact, all of his Aries energy, is in Kamala's 11th house. And so where a partner's son is, whether it's a romantic partner or a business partner or, or a presidential running mate, where that son is shines a light on that part of your chart. So even though we don't know Tim's rising sign, we don't know when he was born, what, we know what day, but we don't know what time he was born, we can know by putting it on Kamala's chart what he's going to shine a light on. And the 11th house is about friends and community and goodwill and benefactors. So, so essentially, um, Tim is showing up as a friend in her chart, and I, I think we know, you know, based on um, Obama and Joe Biden's relationship, and then what we know of Joe Biden and Kamala's relationship, um, that, that that friend component seems to be a big, a big piece of all of this. And so, so, you know, in general, I think he shows up as a friend. He, this is also the spot of her chart um, that relates to her work in communities and the fact that this is a people centered campaign that, that feels very 11th house like to me. And I think Tim really with his, because being that his son is there, um, that definitely shines a light on her desire to campaign for communities and for people and, and for the groups that she feels like she's a part of. So I love that. Love that synergy. Um, related, Tim's um, Jupiter sits on Kamala's moon, and both of those are opposite her son, Mercury. Um, so Kamala's sun and moon are opposite, which means she's a full moon. She was born on a full moon. Um, Jupiter is the place where... Um, where we find spirit, where we find truth, where we find um, justice in some respects, um, where we find abundance and growth. And so sitting on this complex, um, I just think is really beautiful and expansive. So, so with Jupiter on Kamala's moon, I would say that that he is able to help her feel secure. So her moon is fiery and passionate, and um, and that Jupiter sitting there says, "Yeah, you know, this is this is the right energy. This is this is where we want to go and what we want to do," and maybe even expands her ability to be fiery and compassionate. Um, being that that Jupiter is opposite her sun, I think it helps reflect back 
her Libran vitality. So it, it reflects that Jupiter um, in, in fiery Aries kind of reflects back that desire for harmony and fairness and equity and um, you know lets her lets lets her see that in, in terms of the polarity and the polarities that sit in the chart. It, you know, in the locations of the chart, um, this energy, the moon, the lunar energy, the Aries energy is up in that house of community. And then her son is down in um, in a house of individuation and creativity. And so, so yeah, it's just this real, this real kind of like dynamic, creative um, um, building kind of energy. And so I think he really, he really expands that, that desire to show up for the community and that desire to, um, to really live into those Libra values of things like balance and equity and fair trade, fair play, equal relationships, all those kinds of things. So, um, so I think that's, that's really fantastic. I really like the looks of that. Um, I am also intrigued. Tim Waltz says, oops, I don't want the line. I want a circle. Uh, Tim Waltz's moon shows up in Kamala's eighth house. And the eighth house in synastry, so in relationship astrology, the eighth house is a place where we're vulnerable to another person. Um, it's a place of deep emotional intertwinement. And of course, the moon is emotions. And so, um, so I would guess that having a moon that shows up in, in Kamala's eighth house is another way to support her, uh, provide some support. Um, he feels comfortable and safe you know, in terms of how, how they, how they work together, how they intertwine. He, your, where your moon is, is a place where you are vulnerable, where your emotions show up, where you show, you know, where you need to feel good and secure. And, and in the eighth house is sometimes a place where we feel vulnerable. So together, I just feel like there, there's that ability to support each other. Like when we're not sure we can come together and kind of see each other in a way. So, so I like that. I like that that energy. Um, let's see, what else did I want to say? Ah, so because Tim and Kamala were born, um, oh, you know, within a few months of each other, uh, a lot of their outer planets are in about the same place. And so, so that would mean that they're like, they're you know, mission in the world, or like that broader self-expansive self -expansive mission is similar. Um, and I think it's interesting, and, and I think good, that um, Kamala has Saturn in Aquarius. And Saturn is where we do the work in the world. So a, a Saturn in Aquarius is the idea of being the architect of the ideal society. And where this is in the chart is like, that's her public presence. She is, she is an architect of an ideal society. Um, but Tim's Saturn, even though they're born only a few months apart, is actually in Pisces. And a Saturn in Pisces is a very different feel, still looking at the ideal society, but from a much more flowy, watery perspective. So I would guess that um, that Kamala is is very rooted in her belief system and 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 maybe can be more rigid, whereas Tim may be able to show up um, and build structures that are a little bit more fluid. So I think that's an interesting dynamic for them, um, you know, in terms of the work they do in the world. And not that Tim Waltz is not, not a strong character. He is uh, very much so. Um, I just like the work they are meant to do here in the world is, is across that Aquarius Pisces line. And it's, you know, it is, both of them are looking at the greater good. They're just, the tools they're using are different. And I think that makes it stronger. The, um, you know, in terms of energy that might be more challenging, one of the things that I see is that, um, is that, Tim's moon, is this right? Yeah, his moon is square her son Mercury. So um, so squares, to my way of thinking, typically bring creative tension. They bring some of the like, 
you know, squares want to be resolved. Some that energy uh, doesn't want to be static and doesn't want to be stuck. And so when we have a moon, which is our emotions and our feelings squaring a sun, which is um, our vitality and, you know, kind of the, like the CEO of our lives, like, like that could produce some, um, some, some places where they might feel some conflict or they might feel like they need to adaptively manage on things. Um, I don't necessarily think it's bad. I think it's a creative tension. And, and I think, you know, used well in a, in a mature relationship can really um, bring about the best in both people. But it's definitely a place where, like, like they might be going to keep each other honest in all of this um, because, you know, his moon is square her, her solar placements. So, so I think that's, I think overall it's good, but that's, that's the, the, um, the hard aspect that I saw that, um, that I think might, might be interesting. Um, but overall, I think the synastry is, is lovely. Um, yeah, so let's, I think that's what I've got to say on that. So let me turn that off and come back to you. Um, so yeah, I hope this was interesting. I hope you enjoyed um, my little walk down um, the synastry chart. I'm not a relationship astrologer um, per se, but I've definitely studied relationship astrology and I just think it's really interesting to look at. Um, I'm sure that I missed some points that other people are picking up. So if you see anything or you're thinking anything, um, let me know, jot it down. Um, and um yeah, if you like this, if this is interesting, if you would like to see more of this kind of kind of analysis, particularly around this election as it keeps going, let me know. Um, I, I am looking at charts in this way and happy to share. Um, yeah, so, so give me some feedback on whether this is interesting and helpful and whether you want to see more of it. All right. Um, thanks so much for being here and bye for now.